Hey guys, Eckhart Slaughter here with the first of a new series that I think I'll probably call Starship Versus, but I'm really not sure. So if you have an idea, put it down in the comments. But the idea of this is pretty simple. We're gonna take two starships, whether in Star Wars canon or Star Wars Legends, pit them against each other and see who comes out on top. Today's episode is putting the Venator class Star Destroyer against the MC-80 Liberty class Star Cruiser. And I'm gonna compare these ships in four different categories, firepower, shielding, fighter support, and intangibles. But just because a ship comes ahead in two or even three categories doesn't mean that it wins, because I'm gonna be evaluating the ships overall. I've got a few other rules, and the first is that the ships are presumed to be captained by individuals of equal skill. Second, these battles are one-on-one, -on -one, so neither ship gets any sort of backup. However, if a ship has a capability to carry in fighters or even smaller ships, those will be counted. Those are all the rules for now. I'm gonna put them down in the description and I'm sure that we'll develop more as this series progresses. All right, on to the matchup. As I said, today we're seeing the MC-80 Liberty Type Star Cruiser go against the Venator class Star Destroyer. The MC-80 was of course used by the Rebel Alliance during and after the Galactic Civil War. Its primary role was as a destroyer or a cruiser, but it also functioned as a carrier. The Venator, on the other hand, was one of the main capital ships of the Republic during the time of the Clone Wars. It was also used by the Empire, but was later phased out in favor of Imperator and Imperial Star Destroyer classes. Unlike the MC-80, the Venator functioned primarily as a carrier. And really, as we're going to see in a second, this matchup really comes down to whether you'd prefer a cruiser that can also act as a carrier, or a carrier with some offensive capabilities. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. let's first look at the armament of each ship. Compared to other ships at the time, the Venator was not suited for one-on-one -on -one capital ship engagement. It had only 10 turbo lasers, focusing instead on point defense laser cannons. On the other hand, the MC-80 had a combined almost 70 turbo laser and ion cannons, making it really effective in ship-to-ship -ship combat. For that reason, I give the weaponry advantage to the MC-80. Next is shielding, and this also goes to the MC-80. This is admittedly unfair because almost no one can beat the Mon Calamari when it comes to shielding. And both the hull and the shielding of an MC-80 were vastly superior to even an Imperial II class Star Destroyer. On the other hand, a Venator was pretty fragile, comparable instead to a Victory I class Star Destroyer, a much smaller and less protected ship. It also had a flaw with how it deployed fighters, which I'm going to get to in just a second. But since we're on the topic, let's look at the carrying capacity of each ship. Obviously, being that its primary role is a transport ship and a carrier, the Venator comes out on top easily in this category. While the MC-80 would typically carry around 40 ships, the Venator would carry over 400. And specifically, it would carry around 190 V-Wings, ETA-class Jedi Interceptors, and 36 ARC-170 Starfighters. Now, in my mind, each one of these ships is vastly outclassed by the X-Wing and in a dogfight outclassed by the A-Wing. It should also be noted that unlike the MC-80, there are no dedicated bombers on this ship and that the Jedi Interceptor and the V-Wing especially are more akin to TIE fighters rather than air superiority fighters like the X-Wing or the A-Wing. The MC-80 on the other hand would typically carry 12 X-Wings, Y-Wings, and A-Wings and at times perhaps B-Wings as well. Now these are better fighters, at least in my opinion, than any ship used by the Republic with perhaps the exception of the ARC-170. However, notwithstanding that, just based on sheer numbers, this category goes to the Venator. All right, so let's look at intangibles, and I'm not going to give this category to either side, I just want to take notice of anything that doesn't properly appear in the three previous categories. Okay, so the first is that at times, a SPA turbo laser cannon was installed in the belly of a Venator class Star Destroyer. This is seen primarily during the Battle of Coruscant, and I'm not really convinced that it's something that was really widespread, so I'm not going to consider that for this battle. The second is that the technology used on the Mon Cal Cruiser, and this is particularly in the shielding, was much better than that on the Venator. And this is just a function of the time difference between when the starships were used. Besides for the previously mentioned redundant shielding, the Mon Calamari also had very advanced targeting computers, and this would allow them to destroy their enemies from a far distance. I think that this would actually be extremely important in a battle like this, because a carrier is going to want to launch its fighters from far away. The second thing I want to talk about is how a Venator launches its fighters, and it can do so through the bottom of the ship, or if it wants to get many fighters out at once, as it will probably want to in this sort of battle, it can also open up the top. However, doing so is a pretty slow process and leaves the ship extremely vulnerable. Let's keep all of those things in mind as we look at the actual matchup. So, a Venator Star Destroyer and an MC-80 Liberty class Star Cruiser have just exited hyperspace and are staring each other down. What happened? Being that it is primarily a carrier, the Venator's only chance is to launch all of its fighters and to do so quickly. 
However, the Venator is already in extreme peril just because the Mon Calamari is made for ship-to-ship -ship combat. Regardless of where they come out of hyperspace, I think the Mon Calamari can get enough shots in quickly enough that the Venator will have no chance. And really, the only thing that the Republic ship could do is get all of its fighters out and try to swarm the MC-80. Then the question is whether the fighter support and the shielding of the MC-80 is enough to defend itself from destruction. That being said, I don't think any competent Mon Calamari captain is going to allow a Venator cruiser to eject all of its fighters, especially where doing so opens up a weak spot. And in my mind, the Republic ship just doesn't have enough shielding to survive a prolonged engagement with the Alliance capital ship as it would need to to get all of its fighters out. So in my mind, the Venator is not going to be able to take out the MC-80, at least not while also surviving itself. In conclusion, I give this battle to the MC-80 9.5 times out of 10. In a prolonged engagement, perhaps the carrier could get all of its fighters out to swarm the Liberty, but I just don't see that happening. Anyways guys, that's it for today's battle. Let me know what you think down in the comments and of course, let me know what you want to see next. I'll take the most liked comment and make a video out of it as long as it's not too ridiculous. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Eckhart's Ladder. As always, may the force be with you.